So, do you want to do a proof that uses the first four inference rules? I yearn to. Okay. So here we have a nice little proof and, uh, well, here we have an argument in symbols. Conclusion follows the slanted slash. Before the slanted slash, these are the premises numbered. And uh, your job is to prove that this is a valid argument by deducing step by step the conclusion through a series of inferences, each of which follows one of our valid inference rules, the first four. Okay. So you, you asked me to write for you, All so right. I will. Okay, if I was looking at this thing, uh, I might notice that these two O's kind of hook up, and I might think, do hypothetical syllogism with these two, mm -hmm. just to get the conclusion right there. Uh, so but you're seeing that pattern. I'm there. seeing the pattern, but I can't do hypothetical syllogism on part of a line. These four rules only work on entire lines. Oh. So that really would be a mistake on my part. So I'm going to look for something else. I see the B's kind of matching up, and that makes me think of modus tollens. So I can do modus tollens with lines one and three. Right. That would give me tilde A. Good. I want to go ahead and write that, that down. Let's okay. do it, because if you see a modus tollens, you got to do it. Okay, so... Modus tollens is our friend. Tilde A. And that would be MT. Uh -huh. uh, one comma three. Okay. I need to justify that rule. So I'm, I'm using modus tollens. I'm appealing to lines one and three to get this. So if these are true, I know that is. It's not the conclusion, but I keep going until I get the conclusion. So modus tollens is if you have P horseshoe Q and the negation of the Q part, you infer the negation <coughs> of the P part. Good. Yeah, so far, so good, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's see what else can we do here. Now that I got that new piece of information, I can certainly use all these all over again, but I'm saying I can do a disjunctive syllogism with five and line two, mm. because A is true or E horseshoe O, mm. but A is false, therefore this must be true. So I'll do disjunctive syllogism on two and five to get E horseshoe O. Okay, that's a good move. Do I need to bring the parentheses down? They're really not needed because there's no ambiguity at this point. So I don't need them. Don't really need them there. If I had them, would it be okay? Oh, uh, I don't know. I'd, I'd probably growl a bit, but... It wouldn't be illegal, I, though. Eh, you no. tell me. No, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be illegal. I wouldn't think so. No, it'd be, and it'd be grammatically well-formed. Yeah, it's just, it's just extra writing and you get carpal tunnel syndrome if you write so they're too much. Super, they're su superfluous. Superfluous. You so we brought E horseshoe O down by what? That would be a DS, uh -huh. the syllogism, and then it's lines two and five. Okay. And why'd I do that? Because it's there. Okay, but so, so, so P wedge, so disjunctive says if you have P wedge Q, mm -hmm. then you have the negation of the P part, you may infer the Q part. Right. That's what you did. Okay. In effect, it says if you have P wedge Q and you have the negative of the P, it says to the Q, come on down. Yeah. Like the game show. Kind of like it. Okay. Now, if I was stuck, and I'm not, but if I was stuck, I might look at the lines I haven't used yet. This doesn't always work, but I have not yet used lines six and four. Mm. And it's quite possible I'll never need to use four. That's quite that's a possibility. Mm. But I haven't used it yet, and if I draw my attention to it, I do see I can do a hypothetical syllogism. They're both horseshoes, conditionals, yeah. and the O's match up kitty corner in this yeah. case. So if I did hypothetical syllogism, I would get E horseshoe Z, which is exactly what I want. So I'm going to leap at the opportunity and ask you to write down the hypothetical syllogism. E horseshoe Z, that would be from uh, HS lines 4 and 6. And since that's my conclusion, Beautiful. I leap about like a mad caper and say, by golly, that's a conclusion, I'm done. If gonna... the premises are true, the conclusion is guaranteed. Are you going to do that? When it warms up. Okay. When it warms up. Now, I'll just go over this. Yeah. So he's got, this is sort of an upside down hypothetical, isn't it? See, the order doesn't matter, does right. it? The order that the premises of the inference rule appear does not matter. So he's really got P to Q, Q to R, P to R. Yep. See, so you can do hypothetical syllogism this way. A horseshoe B, B horseshoe C, A horseshoe C. Yep. From P to Q, Q to R, P to R. Or you can do it this way, A horseshoe B, B horseshoe C, A horseshoe C. You end up with the P same to Q, side. Q to R, P to R. The order that these appear doesn't affect the validity of the inference, does it? As long as you got the two horseshoes, and somehow they match up corner to corner. Yeah. So Either this way or that way. Very good. Yep. Thank you.